The SCP Foundation is a secret organization that has one goal, to secure, contain, and protect the world from bizarre creatures and objects. The secret bases of this organization are hidden all over the world, and each of them contains scary, dangerous, harmless, miraculous, and simply crazy objects. And now, you'll see some of the weirdest. Object SCP-410. This is a colony of 14 individual beetles, similar to scarabaeus of different colors, from light blue to dark emerald. At first glance, they look like ordinary insects, but soon you notice that these bugs don't feed on leaves, larvae, and other food. They eat mistakes in a text. What? Put a paper with some text containing spelling or grammar mistakes and syntactic errors inside the terrarium with object SCP-410. The bugs run up to misspelled words or punctuation errors and eat them. 20 minutes later, the beetles secrete corrected letters or words from their bodies. This way, they completely edit the text. One member of SCP-410 can eat about 25,000 errors per day. The beetles can live without incorrect texts for about two days. Then they fall into a state of hibernation. To revive them, you need to put a text containing at least 50 errors next to them. Object SCP-2157 is a mysterious 200-square-foot piece of land found in a forest in Japan. People are standing in different poses on this territory, 20 men and 21 women. They're all of different weights and heights. Their feet are on the ground, and their faces are turned to the west. People react to external stimuli. They blink, flinch, and get scared. And still, they're standing there, motionless like trees. They start screaming if somebody tries to lift them off the ground. But soil analysis has shown that SCP-2157 objects have no physical connection to the land. Their feet are in no way connected to the soil. A body scan has shown some earth inside their stomach. As soon as an SCP Foundation employee enters their territory, the people turn their heads in their direction and just stare at them. As soon as the outsider leaves, the people start looking to the west again. Monitoring of this object continues. Object SCP-621. It's hypnotic tulips. They look like ordinary tulips, but have bioluminescence. They get energy and other nutrients from the water and glow purple, blue, or green. This glow has a hypnotic effect on people and all nearby living beings. Bees, for example, start pollinating only these flowers, ignoring all other plants, which speeds up the reproduction of the tulips. Herbivores and other natural enemies avoid SCP-621. All this makes tulips a rapidly spreading species. While growing, SCP-621 takes all the nutrients from other plants growing nearby. It depletes the soil and consumes a lot of water. Under the influence of SCP-621, a person tends to take care of the plants and do everything to make them live as long as possible. For example, owners of large fields only take care of the tulips and ignore the rest of their farmlands under the influence of the glow. Oh God. Oh God. Thus, tulips can spread until they capture all territories and people will treat them with love because of their hypnotic effect. Hmm. Therefore, it's crucial to keep tulips in an isolated greenhouse. Employees of the SCP Foundation water them every day and don't allow them to get out of the area. Object SCP-2559-J While conducting research in one of the laboratories, a scientist accidentally opened a portal to another dimension. Little kittens began to come out of this portal in an endless stream. There's an infinitely huge world of kittens on the other side. If you pick up one of them, it will turn out to be an ordinary little kitty. The portal is located deep underground. It's not yet known how to close it. As a person approaches the doorway, they find themselves under the influence of cute kittens. Aww. Now, they're falling out into our reality at a rate of three kittens per second. SCP-999 is a large moving mass of transparent orange slime. 
It looks like jelly and has the viscosity of peanut butter. The shape and size of the creature are constantly changing. The object's surface is covered with a thin, flexible membrane that prevents the mass from spreading in different directions. It's a friendly creature that likes to play with people. So cute. It jumps on a person, hugs them, and makes gurgling sounds. SCP-999 emits a pleasant and constantly changing odor. It can be the smell of bacon, or fresh bedding, or roses. Touching SCP-999 causes euphoria that increases with the duration of contact. After that, a person experiences happiness for a long time. The object likes to completely envelop people and tickle them from head to heels. Object SCP-831 is a colony of unknown insects, similar in appearance and properties to ordinary termites. They feed on cellulose and water with sucrose. One termite lives from 25 to 40 days. The colony should remain in an empty bright room under constant supervision. Mm. The walls and floor in the room should be made of high strength steel. Employees should pour water with nutrients on the floor to maintain the life of these termites. You can only enter the room in a protective suit. When the termites get access to any object, they begin to use it to make the most primitive tools. For example, if you put a pencil in a room, termites will extract graphite and use the wooden body to create chips or something else. If you constantly feed it, the colony will grow and multiply. It will use primitive tools to create modern technologies. These termites know the properties of all substances and understand how to use them to create inventions. With the help of knowledge of the laws of physics and chemistry, and using wood and graphite from the pencil, in a few days, termites can create a primitive steam engine. The longer they stay in some place, and the more they multiply, the more perfect the inventions will be. Oh. A colony of millions of termites can create high-tech machines or radio transmitters that are incomprehensible to people. The boundaries of inventions are unknown, but the results of their work surpass all human technologies. This is why SCP Foundation employees keep SCP-831 in an enclosed empty room. Object SCP-1689. It's a big bag of potatoes. In stable condition, it weighs about 110 pounds. There are about 200 tubers of ordinary potatoes inside. The inner space of the bag is much larger than it looks from the outside. The size of this area is unknown, but it's completely filled with potatoes. It's impossible to determine where the bag ends. Oh my god! SCP Foundation employees once went on an expedition inside the bag. Scientists created a special paste that broke down starch and turned potatoes into liquid slush. This way, the employees made a tunnel for themselves by spraying the substance and raking potato muck with shovels. That's when they found out that the space had a concrete floor, concrete walls, and a ceiling. They were walking inside some kind of building filled with potatoes. The team punched a hole in the wall and left the construction. The ground was covered with dried grass. There were only potatoes around. What was at the top was unknown, since the entire space was filled with potatoes. They also found a rusty bicycle there. The expedition failed. SCP-1689 leads to a world similar to ours, but something happened there, and it began to fill up with potatoes. Object SCP-623. This is a small room built in the 60s by a professor of biochemistry. Mm. There are only these items in the room. One blue sofa, one red sofa, one green sofa, one white plastic chair, one round table decorated in the same colors as the sofas, seven chairs around the round table, and seven multicolored lighting fixtures. All the furniture is nailed to the floor. Strange patterns are painted on the walls. They perfectly match the style and the location of the furniture. The acoustics and the appearance of the room, as well as the arrangements of all the objects, have a strong, pleasant effect on a person. Oh, yes. Inside the room, people feel harmony and happiness. They relax and become kind and harmless. Oh. 
Because of the feeling of peace and serenity, people can't take the furniture out of the room. They just want to dance, laugh, hug the table, lie on the floor, and cry with joy. But as soon as they leave the room, they immediately become angry, aggressive, and sad. The real world outside the room seems to be a dangerous and dark place. If you stay inside the object for more than a few minutes and then go out, you can lose your mind. This may sound mind-boggling, but scientists found a 385-million-year-old root network. Yeah, it's like a fossilized web of roots that's got them all excited. They're reimagining what the world's first forest might have looked like. And let me tell you, it's not what you'd expect. Under an old highway department quarry near Cairo, New York, they found the remains of a mighty and mature old-growth forest. This place was home to at least three of the world's earliest tree-like plants. But these plants, in fact, looked nothing like trees. One of them looked like giant stalks of celery. The second type resembled pine trees with hairy fern-like fronds for leaves. And the third plant was like a palm tree with a bulbous base and fern-like branches. It's like they couldn't decide what they wanted to be when they grew up. But here's the kicker. These primordial trees were quite old and large, so they weren't packed densely together. They were relatively scattered across a floodplain that ebbed and flowed with the seasons. And even though dry periods were a regular part of the cycle, these tree-like plants thrived in semi-arid conditions. Their roots had adapted to the possibility of short-term flooding, which is confusing because they're not supposed to survive in those conditions. But wait, it gets even weirder. Other trees in the area came more prepared for bouts of water scarcity. There were extinct pine tree-like plants with deeper root systems that could spread 36 feet wide and 23 feet deep. These guys were more advanced than the fern-like trees and had true leaves that could photosynthesize. It's like they were showing off or something. So why did the fern-like trees dominate prehistoric deltas while the pine-like trees dominated the floodplains? It's like they didn't even care about setting up near rivers or water sources that could carry their genes farther afield. Maybe they were just rebels without a cause, doing their own thing and not caring what anyone else thought. In any case, this finding has got evolutionary ecologists all excited. They're saying that the earliest trees could colonize a range of environments and weren't limited to wet areas. Who knew trees were so versatile? You've just moved to the Romanian city of Cloj-Napoca to make a startup, but you still have no idea what kind of horror will happen to you. In this city, you meet new people, and they tell you the story of the mysterious Hoya Bachu Forest located to the west of the city. They say it's the country's scariest place, and locals call it the Bermuda Triangle of Transylvania. After the meeting, you decide to check out of this place. You drive to the edge of the forest. You go into the thicket and hear some singing of birds and the chirping of crickets. Somewhere in the distance, branches crackle and some animal howls. Some trees look ominous. Their branches look like many crooked arms. It seems to you that someone is watching you. You take a few more steps and find yourself in a small clearing. This is a perfect circle with grass, but no trees are growing here for some reason. You hear a moan from above. You look up and see a bright light within the trees. It gets brighter and brighter. And you lose consciousness. You're walking through the forest. It's already dark. You're cold, but fortunately, you can see the road ahead and your car. You come home, open the door, and look at the wall clock. This is strange. It's 10 p.m. now. You drove to the forest at 5 p.m., then took a little walk in the woods. Where did a few hours go? Then you notice something weird. There are strange red spots on your left hand. Are these burns or some rash? You go to the mirror and see that there's still a strange rash on your legs, arms, and neck. You tell your new friends about it, but they don't look surprised. They say that most legends about this forest are associated with time travel and memory lapses. 
Some say that they don't remember how they spent several hours in the forest and what they did there. Others talk about a strange rash on their hands. There are legends that the ghosts of lost people wander there, and some flying objects often visit this place. Someone said they had heard an ominous whisper in the forest and seen flying heads without bodies. The most famous legend says about a five-year-old girl who disappeared in the forest. Rescuers and locals searched for her in the woods for several weeks, but found nothing. Then, a few years later, the girl came out of the forest alive and well, but the strangest thing is that she hadn't aged at all. She remained the same five-year-old girl. After that, people began to think there was a time portal in the forest. If someone gets there, they'll find themselves in the future. It can be several hours or several years. Another myth is about a biologist who photographed the local fauna in the forest. He was taking photos of flowers and trees and caught on camera a strange object that flew in the sky. After that, people were sure that beings of extraterrestrial civilizations visited the forest. In the 15th century, a woman also disappeared there, but 500 years later, she came out of the forest completely healthy. Of course, it's unlikely that she was that woman. But a coin dated to the 1600s was found in her pocket. All these stories as well as reports about phantoms are rumors and myths. No one has yet been able to prove that the forest is really the center of paranormal activity. But if you decide to visit this place, ask local farmers who live near the forest to share some stories with you. Perhaps they'll tell you something more creepy and truthful. But this forest is really scary. You may feel anxious and inexplicable panic. There are many videos on the internet where tourists and travelers visited this forest and talked about unpleasant excitement and strange sounds. Also, you can see something strange in the woods at any moment with your own eyes. This is a round clearing where, for some reason, trees don't grow. There's grass and plants here. The soil here is the same as in the rest of the forest. Scientists took an analysis of the ground to check this. It's still unknown why there's no trees. Some trees in the forest have a strange curved shape. It's unclear what made them grow this way, but they look creepy. You can take a walk in the forest and check how true the legends about it are. But don't be afraid, you won't be alone. The Hoya Bachu Forest is one of Romania's most popular tourist destinations. Every year, thousands of fans of mystical riddles come here to test their nerves. But even if you don't find anything mystical in the forest, you will definitely enjoy the city. Externally, it's a beautiful city with cozy European architecture. But go inside the buildings and you'll see modern stylish bars and cafes. This place also attracts many IT specialists. You've probably heard of forests where some guy decorated all the trees with sinister dolls. But all this will seem like fun toys compared to what one guy found in County Park in Huntington, New York. He was walking in the forest and came to a small clearing. There, many trees had attached photos with images of people who were missing, just a person's face with his name, date, and place of disappearance. The guy recorded this place on video and posted it on the internet. The video became popular on Reddit. Its users discovered that all these people from photos went missing in different states. None of them were found alive. After such a terrible walk, the guy called the police. Soon, they found out that one local hung these photos on trees during a Halloween party. At the request of the police, he removed all the pictures. The case was closed. Imagine, you're lost in the woods. You've been walking in the forest for several hours. You tie your scarf to a tree branch and walk further along the narrow path. Half an hour later, you come to the tree with the scarf. You've never turned left or right. But why are you walking in circles then? The answer is a round forest. There's nothing mystical here, but it still attracts the attention of many tourists. The forest grows in the south of Japan. If you look at it from a bird's eye view, you'll see that trees grow in a circle, forming several layers. 
The closer to the center of this circle, the closer the trees are placed to each other. It resembles mysterious circular patterns in fields worldwide. But there's nothing fantastic here. No spaceships from another planet and no natural anomaly made this. But people! In 1973, people planted trees in the shape of 10 concentric circles. It was an experiment that showed how cedars would grow in such unusual conditions. The trees began to grow in a convex shape, symmetrically fanning out. This proved that the size of the gaps between the trees affects their growth. Initially, according to the plan, people had to cut down trees. But the place became popular among tourists. Its photo quickly spread throughout the internet, so people decided to leave it untouched. You can also visit this forest and take beautiful drone shots. One guy was walking in the forest of County Park in Huntington, New York. He came to a mysterious small area where he found cans of leftover food and a dirty blanket on the ground. Broken branches lay nearby, folded into a strange shape resembling a cage. And almost every tree had A4 sheets of paper hanging on it. There were about 10 sheets in total. Someone carelessly stuck them to the trunks with duct tape. All these sheets had photos of missing people and some information about their disappearance. A city where a person had vanished and the local police phone number. The guy got scared and ran away. But before that, he filmed everything on his phone. He posted the video on the internet. And after that, Reddit users started their own investigation. It turned out all those people whose faces were printed on the posters were really missing. The man who discovered this place called the police. Fortunately, the officers quickly found the person who had done this. He threw a Halloween party and decided to hang posters of missing people to create a scary atmosphere. He removed all the photos and the police stopped the investigation. Do you know these guys standing in the streets and holding a free hugs sign? Oh, it's so cute. They give so many positive vibes to people. And now, imagine you're walking through a dark forest alone in the fog. And somewhere in the thicket, you notice a small gray house. It's hidden in the foliage and looks like an entrance to a bunker. It has no windows, only a dark doorway leading into the darkness. And you see that someone wrote, free hugs hut on the wall. Yeah, not so cute this time. The exact location of this hut is unknown, but it's somewhere in the forests of Wisconsin. In fact, there's nothing terrible inside. Some garbage, dry leaves, cobwebs, and moss. Teenagers or homeless people like to hang out in this hut. Some of them probably had a good sense of humor if they wrote this phrase on the wall. But imagine if a scary, pale old woman had been living there for years. She'd be waiting for you inside to hug you tightly with her long, thin arms. We're in Greenville, South Carolina. There's a forest next to this town. You go there and notice a silhouette of a man. It's a big sinister clown. You freeze in fear. He's just standing there among the trees and looking at you smiling. Your knees are shaking, you're sweating. The clown raises his hand and beckons you with his finger. You don't go and the clown makes a sad grimace. Then he takes some money out of his pocket and shows it to you. You finally return control over your body and run away from the forest as fast as you can. The scariest thing is that there are several such clowns in the woods of Greenville. Many locals have seen them walking among trees, attracting people's attention with green laser pointers. Fortunately, instead of approaching them, residents went to the police station. The clowns called people to an abandoned house in the woods. Officers searched the building but found nothing suspicious there. Still, locals prefer to avoid the forest. In forests, you can not only see, but also hear something terrible. For example, you can hear people's screams. These sounds come from nowhere and only at night. They can drive you mad if you don't know their nature. Coyotes live in forests all over North America, Canada, and Mexico. In the winter and spring, these animals howl and scream. 
Even if one coyote does it, it may seem that several of them have surrounded you. This illusion occurs because there are many different sounds in the forest. Birds, animals, the sound of falling rain, all this mixes with the coyote's howling. And it may seem to you that these animals are everywhere. Also, coyotes can change the tones of their voices and sound like people. Now let's forget about creepy things and find something beautiful in the woods. You're in a wide green clearing surrounded by a dense forest. You approach the thicket and see a hole in it. It's not a huge hollow, but a perfectly round passage. It looks like a portal to a magical land. And it's the creation of a famous Finnish artist named Antti Leitinen. He carefully cut the leaves and branches of the surrounding trees to create the perfect circle. He called it Broken Landscape. Besides this hole, the artist has many other unique works. He almost always deals with nature. He has created similar small circles resembling suns in the dense branches of leafless trees. You don't need to travel all over the world to see them. You can find photos of almost all of the artist's works on the internet. Let's move to the green forests of Scotland. Walking among trees and bushes, you can come across human figures. They stand motionless and faceless and reflect everything around them, quite literally. The famous Scottish sculptor Rob Mulholland made these statues out of plexiglass. This is a special kind of glass that reflects light like a mirror. Six sculptures make up a large vestige installation. Each figure is in a different pose. They reflect trees, bushes, and grass, merging with the forest. In summer, when everything is blooming, the figures are beautiful. But in early spring or late autumn, they reflect nothing but grayness and lifelessness, which makes them look pretty creepy. The sculptor wanted to show a trace of people who lived in the forests many years ago when humanity was more connected to nature. At that time, survival strongly depended on the state of forests and harvests. And these statues show this unity with the woods. There's a stunning forest in the south of Japan. There are no strange things there. It's weird by itself. If you look at the forest from a height, you'll see that the trees there grow in concentric circles. There are several of them. The closer to the center of this area, the closer the trees are standing to each other. In the outer row, the trees don't grow densely. The whole area resembles mysterious circular patterns in fields all over the world. But this is not a natural anomaly, but the result of human intervention. In 1973, people planted trees so that they created 10 concentric circles. The main idea of this experiment was to find out how cedars could grow in such circular conditions. The researchers called this place experimental forestry. Surprisingly, the trees began to grow in a convex shape, symmetrically fanning out. This proved that the size of the gaps between the trees greatly affected their growth. Initially, the scientists planned to cut the trees down after the experiment was over, but the place became very popular with tourists. People love to walk along these trails and take beautiful pictures using drones. The next strange finding is in the US. This is Vashon Highway, surrounded by a large forest. In its thicket, you can find an unusual tree with a rusty red bicycle inside its trunk. It looks like it grew into the trunk and became a part of it. Only the handlebars and one of the wheels stick out of the bark. The bike got into this tree in the 50s. One young guy received it as a present for his birthday, but he didn't like its handlebars and rugged wheels. So he just left this present near a bush and never came back for it. The bush turned out to be a young tree. With time, its trunk expanded and grew around the iron body of the bicycle. When locals noticed this, they decided not to remove the bike from the tree. And they did right, since this place became popular among tourists. One guy was walking in the forest of County Park in Huntington, New York. He came to a mysterious small area where he found cans of leftover food and a dirty blanket on the ground. Broken branches lay nearby, folded into a strange shape resembling a cage. And almost every tree had A4 sheets of paper hanging on it. There were about 10 sheets in total. 
someone carelessly stuck them to the trunks with duct tape. All these sheets had photos of missing people and some information about their disappearance. A city where a person had vanished and the local police phone number. The guy got scared and ran away. But before that, he filmed everything on his phone. He posted the video on the internet. And after that, Reddit users started their own investigation. It turned out all those people whose faces were printed on the posters were really missing. The man who discovered this place called the police. Fortunately, the officers quickly found the person who had done this. He threw a Halloween party and decided to hang posters of missing people to create a scary atmosphere. He removed all the photos and the police stopped the investigation. Do you know these guys standing in the streets and holding a free hugs sign? Oh, it's so cute. They give so many positive vibes to people. And now, imagine you're walking through a dark forest alone, in the fog. And somewhere in the thicket, you notice a small gray house. It's hidden in the foliage and looks like an entrance to a bunker. It has no windows, only a dark doorway leading into the darkness. And you see that someone wrote, free hugs hut on the wall. Yeah, not so cute this time. The exact location of this hut is unknown, but it's somewhere in the forests of Wisconsin. In fact, there's nothing terrible inside. Some garbage, dry leaves, cobwebs, and moss. Teenagers or homeless people like to hang out in this hut. Some of them probably had a good sense of humor if they wrote this phrase on the wall. But imagine if a scary, pale old woman had been living there for years. She'd be waiting for you inside to hug you tightly with her long, thin arms. We're in Greenville, South Carolina. There's a forest next to this town. You go there and notice a silhouette of a man. It's a big, sinister clown. You freeze in fear. He's just standing there among the trees and looking at you, smiling. Your knees are shaking, you're sweating. The clown raises his hand and beckons you with his finger. You don't go, and the clown makes a sad grimace. Then he takes some money out of his pocket and shows it to you. You finally return control over your body and run away from the forest as fast as you can. The scariest thing is that there are several such clowns in the woods of Greenville. Many locals have seen them walking among trees, attracting people's attention with green laser pointers. Fortunately, instead of approaching them, residents went to the police station. The clowns called people to an abandoned house in the woods. Officers searched the building, but found nothing suspicious there. Still, locals prefer to avoid the forest. In forests, you can not only see, but also hear something terrible. For example, you can hear people's screams. These sounds come from nowhere and only at night. They can drive you mad if you don't know their nature. Coyotes live in forests all over North America, Canada, and Mexico. In the winter and spring, these animals howl and scream. Even if one coyote does it, it may seem that several of them have surrounded you. This illusion occurs because there are many different sounds in the forest. Birds, animals, the sound of falling rain, all this mixes with the coyotes howling. And it may seem to you that these animals are everywhere. Also, coyotes can change the tones of their voices and sound like people. Now let's forget about creepy things and find something beautiful in the woods. You're in a wide green clearing, surrounded by a dense forest. You approach the thicket and see a hole in it. It's not a huge hollow, but a perfectly round passage. It looks like a portal to a magical land. And it's the creation of a famous Finnish artist named Antti Leitinen. He carefully cut the leaves and branches of the surrounding trees to create the perfect circle. He called it Broken Landscape. Besides this hole, the artist has many other unique works. He almost always deals with nature. He has created similar small circles resembling suns in the dense branches of leafless trees. You don't need to travel all over the world to see them. You can find photos of almost all of the artist's works on the internet. 
Let's move to the green forests of Scotland. Walking among trees and bushes, you can come across human figures. They stand motionless and faceless and reflect everything around them, quite literally. The famous Scottish sculptor Rob Mulholland made these statues out of plexiglass. This is a special kind of glass that reflects light like a mirror. Six sculptures make up a large vestige installation. Each figure is in a different pose. They reflect trees, bushes, and grass, merging with the forest. In summer, when everything is blooming, the figures are beautiful. But in early spring or late autumn, they reflect nothing but grayness and lifelessness, which makes them look pretty creepy. The sculptor wanted to show a trace of people who lived in the forests many years ago when humanity was more connected to nature. At that time, survival strongly depended on the state of forests and harvests. And these statues show this unity with the woods. There's a stunning forest in the south of Japan. There are no strange things there. It's weird by itself. If you look at the forest from a height, you'll see that the trees there grow in concentric circles. There are several of them. The closer to the center of this area, the closer the trees are standing to each other. In the outer row, the trees don't grow densely. The whole area resembles mysterious circular patterns in fields all over the world. But this is not a natural anomaly, but the result of human intervention. In 1973, people planted trees so that they created 10 concentric circles. The main idea of this experiment was to find out how cedars could grow in such circular conditions. The researchers called this place experimental forestry. Surprisingly, the trees began to grow in a convex shape, symmetrically fanning out. This proved that the size of the gaps between the trees greatly affected their growth. Initially, the scientists planned to cut the trees down after the experiment was over, but the place became very popular with tourists. People love to walk along these trails and take beautiful pictures using drones. The next strange finding is in the US. This is Vashon Highway, surrounded by a large forest. In its thicket, you can find an unusual tree with a rusty red bicycle inside its trunk. It looks like it grew into the trunk and became a part of it. Only the handlebars and one of the wheels stick out of the bark. The bike got into this tree in the 50s. One young guy received it as a present for his birthday, but he didn't like its handlebars and rugged wheels. So he just left this present near a bush and never came back for it. The bush turned out to be a young tree. With time, its trunk expanded and grew around the iron body of the bicycle. When locals noticed this, they decided not to remove the bike from the tree. And they did right, since this place became popular among tourists. 